Um, if you haven't uh, reviewed the Series 1, 2, 3, and 4 conference call, please do that uh, at daytradingthefutures.com. Go to videos. Gerald's been kind enough to uh, record all those for you. So um, please review that because I go from uh, the basics into, um, into really uh, like today. We're going to start getting a little bit more in-depth on these things. So um, just daytradingthefutures.com, daytradingthefutures.com, and then go to uh, videos. And then I would start with Series 1 video for the basics and go up to uh, Series 4. And then we're going to build upon this one today. I'm going to touch base on the auto trade today and how you can utilize it. And then next week we're going to go into how to back test. And then uh, I'm going to show you how to back test to find out um, if you do want to auto entry in some of these, especially with the momentum indicator, which I really love. Um, I want to show you how you can back test it and, um, and try to find uh, the time frames or the results that you desire based upon your risk tolerance. Okay, so that being said, um, we're going to go into this. Uh, we're we're going to touch base very little uh, today on the retracement, the FZR. The FZR is a full retracement up into this zone. Um, if you guys have been trading any type of market in this market that we're in, whether it be any type of futures, currency, crypto, it really doesn't matter. Um, the volatility has been just absolutely phenomenal. Uh, it's created a lot of opportunity for us. And um, so uh, this is an FZR into the zone. Uh, what I want to go today is something I'm getting an, um, an update out to you guys on a momentum trade. So what happens is that uh, we've been getting a lot of good feedback from traders around the world that trade, you know, whether it be futures, currency, Forex, stocks. Um, we have traders that trade stock. We have traders that trade crypto, Bitcoin, etc. So you know, we've been getting a lot of good feedback of the FZR. The FZR is just a simple retracement to our zone, and then we get a simple pullback into that zone. And um, as you can tell, the, uh, the accuracy has been really uncanny in this volatility. Uh, a lot of great feedback about how this zone stops the market, likes to reverse in that type of zone. What I want to go over tonight is, and then we're going to go over next week how to back test this stuff a little bit um, on. I'm going to go over the momentum setup because I think if the one of the simplest setups to, that we haven't talked about to, to, to recognize and you get a little momentum behind it is the uh, what's called MOMO. So uh, we went over the FZR a lot in previous videos. So I don't want to touch base so much on that until we get into back testing the FZR uh, next week and the MOMO. I want to go over these two trade setups that happen uh, on a daily basis in all these markets. And um, here's one Momo, and then here is a second one. Uh, these arrows, so you guys are going to be getting an update, and the update is going to allow you to do uh, a couple things. It's going to allow you to only let the auto in on FZR trades, and then, or it's going to allow you to only... Uh, let the auto get you in on momentum trades or what you can do hey, hey Randy or what you can do is you can uh, you can put the strategy on twice and I thought this would be easier for you to see if you put on twice is have the FZR trade run independently of the Momo trade so I'm going to show you how to do that tonight uh, I do have the Momo programmed. Um, it's working very efficient. Um, it's catching these momentum trades that happen in these various markets. And depending what your risk tolerance is or what type of uh, trader you are, um, I'm going to start showing you in the next couple conference calls. If you're a scalp trader, I'll show you how to do that. If you are a position trader, I'll show you how to do that. Or if you're a just looking for two or three, four trades, depending on that. And I'll show you how you can, you can adjust um, your, you know, everybody's risk tolerance is different. So some traders just want to scalp and get, you know, a few ticks and do it multiple times during the day. Other traders like to trade just a few times to lower the risk in the market and not subject themselves to a lot of volatility. 
in the market and put themselves into one, two, or three trades a day. And you're going to have to adjust time frames to do that, to catch these trades. Um, but the FZR and the Momo trades, they're going to come up no matter what the same way in all time frames. So it really doesn't matter if you use a Uni Rinko that Ninja is standard for, the Uni Rinko bar, or if you use a, let's say, a Sim Rinko bar that we use, that we developed, um, that Jero and I have for you guys. So it, you can, or if you want to do minute charts, or if you want to do share charts, or if you want to do tick charts, um, it's pretty universal. In other words, um, this, these ATRs automatically print and try to find the zones. This is zone trading. And, you know, so when you get up to the zone at FZR, an FZR is a, you get, if you play my previous series of videos, that's full zone retracement, full zone retracement. You get up to that zone, get a pull-in bar, get a full retracement. Full retracement means you get above 80. Or we can call it a percent if you want, call it a number, whatever you want to call it. You get above this red line, you're in a full retracement. The market is fully retraced. And if you want uh, to have lower risk in a trade, then what you want to do on a full retracement, you want that uh, the oscillator to get above 80, and then you don't want to exceed this zone, this FZR full retracement zone. You want to come at it or inside the zone, but you don't want, you can't be trading two or three bars outside the zone, and then all of a sudden get a pull-in bar and think that the, the trade is is um, is going in your direction because. Um, from all the testing I've done, forward, back, and all this stuff live, uh, this zone should reverse the market. So once we come up to the zone, we should have a high probability trade inside that zone. So that is a full retracement zone. But we did videos on that, and I'm going to go over that next week, how, uh, how we can use different time frames to back test on that. But I want to concentrate today because we only got about 45 minutes to go over this stuff. And because uh, Gerald says anything longer than that, pulls his hair out. Um, so um, we want to try to keep these videos around that. And I, I already come to the understanding and with Gerald, I said, listen, it, we're just going to keep doing these videos until until everybody's on the same page. And then uh, everybody's doing well with the system, meaning they understand why these two setups come up. Because these setups are not, they, they don't change on a daily or weekly basis. It's black and white. Either it's an FZR or it's not. Either it's a momentum trade or it's not. Now, what we can do is we can add filters to alleviate uh, the down draw on accounts based upon adding trend filters to the system, which you're going to get an update on, and I'm going to go over that also. So, but as far as the Momo and FZR, they don't change. It's the same setup. So, so basically, you're coming into the trading day if you use an algorithm like this saying, hey, I'm looking for two setups. It's either going to be an FCR or Momo trade, period. It's one of the two. Now, what if you've been paying attention to their last couple of videos, uh, you're going to recognize some of the top Momo trades happen only after this guy happens right here, full retracement. So what we want to recognize then is we want to recognize that uh, the top setup is an FCR um, the top setup on a Momo trade, I'm sorry, is happens after an FCR is established and actually is running. So, oops, I don't want 10, no, one. So what we want to do then is we want to, if we're if we're strictly trading momentum, momentum setups, meaning Momo trades, we want to we want this number one to be established, meaning we want an FCR to be established and start rolling over. The first momentum trade that happens after an FZR is typically your best one you're going to get. And the reason being is, is that if a market can come up and stop inside of a zone and literally stop and reverse inside of that zone and get some momentum to the downside, what happens is, is that a lot of counter trend traders will start trying to pump it back up. But the smart money are what's called, you know, you know, a, a lot of times the, the smart money um, likes to sell low and buy lower or buy high, sell higher. They, they don't try to sell the bottom, the top or buy the bottom. 
So what a lot of these um, algorithms will do is they are programmed uh, to sell low, buy lower, buy high, buy or buy high, and sell higher. So this is the ultimate sweet spot momentum trade because we're coming out at FCR. So I want you guys to recognize that, and you're going to see uh, it's not. This is not something where you see well that just happens once a week or two times, you'll see it happen over and over again on a weekly and monthly basis over and over again. You'll see tons of these. So the best ones that you want to cherry pick are the ones coming out of an FCR. Now you do have ones, if you're a scalper, if I'm a scalper, I would take this trade because once you get a trend change from green to red on an, on a uh, on the dots change, meaning the ATR dots change, meaning trend change, you see this a lot, and this is just a shallow one, but you know this is the low of this bar would be a fill of 37.06 and a quarter, and it got as low as 02. So that's four and a quarter S&P points. That's 16 to 17 ticks on the first push. If you're a scalper, this happens a lot, and I've got traders that that, uh, that email me about this trade setup on on various markets, and they love this when you first get the trend change, you get the first MOMO that happens, and I'm not talking just on the larger time frame. The smaller time frame, it really clicks really well. And I'm going to show you how to do the algo with this and how some traders are utilizing this, uh, how they can utilize this with the algo and do this. So if you're a scalper, this wave is really good because that is a 16 tick potential wave. Sometimes they're even very, very, very robust. But if you're trying to get a really big potential wave on a Momo, I mean, we're looking at a potential right here of 36.91, the low of that bar for a light fill, all the way down to, what, 76. So, you know, you're looking at 14, 15 S&P points. So then all of a sudden you're looking at 50 ticks potential. So now we got 50 tick potential on the first wave after an FCR or a 16 tick potential. So you, gotta wear, you have to be aware of that when you're doing MOMO trades. Uh, M M Momo trade strictly is abbreviation for momentum. That's all it is. You know, you know. Since I've been doing this, um, actually, I was a guest speaker at the Las Vegas uh, trade show. We had about 5,500, 6,000 traders, and a, a lot of traders have software that counter trend trade the market. So, and when I was asking a lot of these traders when I was a guest speaker, they try to get this way back up. They try to get this way back up. A lot of their oscillators. And indicators are counterintuitive to what the market trend is. So that's why these trades work. That's why the FCR works so well. It gets all the counter trend traders pushing it up. You get that reversal. You get that big push. And then uh, momentum traders work really well because the uh, the counter trend traders are trying to push that uh, back up because they're they're in the mindset of saying, hey, it can't go any lower. The S and P's down this much, etc. Or my oscillators at my my uh, my stochastic's oversold. It can't go any lower. No, a stochastic oversold, it can stay oversold for days on the daily, weekly chart. So that's why traders tend to uh, not do very well that are amateur traders that don't really trade momentum or trend. They like to counter uh, trade the market, and that's how they get beat up a lot. Where our philosophy is a lot different, what we try to do is we try to let the market establish the trend with these ATR dots. These ATR dots, um, they're going to tell us the trend. If we're if we're red, we're shorting. If we're green, we're buying retracements. And then what we do is we take it a little step further and say, okay, I got the trend because this is this is a higher time frame trend filter that I'm using. I'm not using the same time frame. So this is an Uni Renko bar that is a one twenty twenty. I don't know of anybody that uses a Rinko, Uni Rinko bar like I do, 120, 20. They are, all have different sets of numbers through here. But uh, this is my one of my largest time frames I like to use, 120, 20. And uh, it's a standard Ninja Trader Rinko bar. But the reason why I like it is it catches trend. And it's really, really accurate with trend. So when my, when my ATR dots start printing these zones, FZR, these zones, that's pretty much the scope of the trend. It's, we're not trying to counter trend trade. If you go too short time frame, like a lot of these ATRs do, a lot of these time frames do, a lot of these other indicators do, it's up, down, it's red, green, red, green. You don't really have a scope of the trend and you sort of sort of get your mind the other way where uh, this FZR, 
I mean, this zone, I mean, red ATRs, get your mind right. Your mind's right saying, hey, we're shorting the market. You know, we're shorting retracements. And so once you get your mind right like that, then what you can do is you can say, okay, since I got my mind right and I know that we are on short bias, then I'm going to look for two setups. I'm going to look for an FCR, a full zone retracement. I'm going to look for a MOMO. And then to take a step further, if you have a trend change from green to red, that is an initial, the, the initial trend change is right here. So the initial trend change would be here. It turns red to green, green to red. And so this momentum, you know, it's going to be pretty much scalping because you're going to get that big push down, big push, 15, 20, sometimes 30 ticks. And if you want to scalp it, you can do that. And then you get that retracement, that first and second retracement up to the zone is the best. I call that my, my uh, um, Elliott Wave 3 and Elliott Wave 5. If you know anything about Elliott Wave, the Wave 3 and Wave 5 are your largest waves. So typically what happens when I see a trend change on this time frame, I see a Wave 3 that happens on the first retracement because you're getting that first wave, 1, Wave 1, Wave 2, Wave 3, big card down, Wave 4, Wave 5. So if you do know anything about Elliott Wave, Wave 3 and 5 are impulse waves, and my FCRs are great for catching impulse waves. If you want to do well with FCRs, I did a video, a couple of videos on this already under daytradingthefutures.com, look at our videos. Um, if you play those, you'll notice I love Wave 3, it's usually an FCR. It's a full zone retracement, and so is a, a, a 5. So, just remember that is that if you are trying to look for momos, momentum trades only, a lot of you guys want to be in and out with break even plus one, hit target one fast. You don't want the market to oscillate around and chop around on you. Momentum trades are the best at that because they are fast and they're furious. I mean, when you have a this type of potential, you know, that's that's we're not scalping the market here. I mean, you're talking about 3691 on the S P down to 3676 as a swing potential you know so just be aware of that be aware of when they occur now what we know what constitutes an FCR then FCR full, full zone retracement we did videos on this we know that if you get above 80 and you come up to the zone within a couple ticks or inside the zone you still want to exceed it by two or three uh, closes outside and you get a reversal bar then that's a trade so this would be a cell setup at that level and we do have the algo that does that for you automatically if you want to do that, which we're going to go over back testing next week on the FCR, I'm not going to go into that one today. We're going to go over the uh, what I added for you guys, the Momo, and then we'll tie it all in together on next week's video on how to look at algo in, algo out on these things. So, so what's the difference in? And I I've done this a lot of videos already in the previous. Is it? So the difference on an FCR is a this is a full retracement, right? So this is a full retracement. It's got to get at or inside my zone, right? It's got to get above 80, and then get the reversal bar. That's a full retracement. So what constitutes a momentum chart then? A momentum chart says this. Is that a momentum trade? It says that, hey, when my oscillator comes back up and I get a red reversal bar. Now, let me explain this to you also. Uh, these arrows automatically fire, by the way. So um, I show it in the room right now. Um, in fact, what I'm going to do, I'm, I'm thinking about just showing the momentum trades on the longer time frame and short time frame because you know what the FCRs are already because they come inside the zone. That way you know just what the momentum is. Um, or I may just change a color of momentum is one and um, the full retracement is another one. W would you guys like that, seeing different color arrows for different the two different setups? Would that help you guys? Um, if you had different colors, just give me a why if that would help. Because I thought about that in the update, giving you different colors where you can get the momentum could be a different color and you can change the size of it uh, to the FCR. Okay, so so that's what we'll do. So that's what we'll do. And then you can change the arrow size like Thomas wanted to in the first place. All right, so that being said, so here's today's action. So these arrows will automatically print. This arrow automatically printed live today. 
in the room, this printed live right there, right that one. The longer time frame you get, the larger potential move you're going to have. And I can't explain that enough. If I go down, and this works all the way down to a 1-1-1 Rinko, <laughs> and believe it or not, you're like, man, you're crazy, you know, bringing that small. Check it out when you get it. You can pretty much change the time frame to tell it how many momentum trades you want to have. If you just want to trade two, three times, and you want these big potential moves of 10, 15, 20 SP points, and with small stops in case it reverses, smaller stop in case it reverses, you can do that, right? So, or if you want, if you want a real, real small stops, and see these momentum trades come up over and over and over and over again, like one, you know, I'll show you in a second how that works. Then these zeros will fire off on smaller time frames. It's not limited to the uni Renko bar. It's not limited to the minute chart, share chart. You know, it's not limited to any any uh, standard Renko bar or sim Renko that we develop. Any time frame you per tick chart, if you like a tick chart at 233 tick, 377, 550, 987, any Fibonacci number you want, you know, you can gear it towards how you like to trade that type of market. All right that error will fire automatically. So these fired automatically today in the market, okay? You don't have to use this as a strategy. You can use it as an indicator. When we get this out to you, it's an indicator and strategy combination. So if you don't like the strategy, you like manually fill in your trades, these errors will come up automatically when there is a momentum or a full retracement FCR. So that being said, Thomas had a great point. He emailed me the other day. We love Thomas, long-term member, and Thomas said, hey, can you make these zeros bigger? Yes, but then the more I thought about it, I was like, listen, what we can do then, we're going to make them bigger, you can change it to triangles, arrows, whatever you want, but then let's change the color, you know, that way you know a momentum is a certain color, and an FCR, a qualified FCR is a different color also, okay, that way you can differentiate if you're trading indicators, is it a full zone retracement, or is it a momentum indicator, okay? What the momentum indicator basically says is this. If I just cannot get above, and this guy right here, this oscillator, cannot break through 80, cannot break through 80. If it breaks through 80, before I get a red reversal bar, there's no arrow that's going to print. Consequently, I have two moving averages on here. Moving averages to me are absolutely worthless. I can't stand moving averages. They're worthless to me, but I love them for two things, trend direction and then support and resistance on the daily and weekly chart and monthly charts. Love it. Absolutely love it. That's how I find projections. You guys seen this year I've been really good on my projections. I called the top at the 4350 way before it happened. I called the targets at 3500, 3550, came down to them. I've been getting those not it's not me, it's because of the moving averages off the daily, weekly, and monthly. I love them off of that. I love them for trend direction. Other than that, I don't use them. But I do use them for momentum a momentum uh, trade for the arrow to fire. These these moving averages have to be spread apart. When I get these counter trend traders, when these green bars start printing, they got to start printing. I got to have spread on the MA, and I got to have what? I got to have the oscillator below 80. If those two things happen, you're going to see that arrow automatically print for you in the trade room as you see it now. Okay, so tomorrow when I get at 815, we'll watch these markets all the way to 1030. I'll watch them with you. I'll try to help you guys with the uh, possible entries. Is it, you know, that is uh, what I'm looking at. I'm looking at the oscillator. The oscillator is here, and I get an arrow that prints. It tells me I got a red reversal bar that printed. I'm looking for a continuation. Okay, so that's how we're going to use the Momo and FCR. The the indicator will be two different colors. Uh, that and you can change it to a triangle arrow, what have you. Okay, now let's take another step further. So I did videos on market profile. Traders are like, well, why do you have market profile? Well, market profile to me is one of the top indicators that uh, there's no other indicator that I've ever seen super, that, that's ever uh, uh, beat ex, uh, results like market profile. Uh, uh, Pete Stoudemire came out with it in 1985. He came out with price profile. 1994 came out with, uh, with uh, volume profile. And you're probably like, well, if, if this works so well, Momo and FCRs, and you know, why use market profile? Well, market profile 
Uh, you have a, a control point where it tells you the most volume is traded in that instrument you're trading during the day. And you have a, let me show you real quick, and you have, I just want to show you another way you can do this too. And then you have, um, you have a control, and you have uh, control, red, and green. And these move during the day based upon volume. Volume is high value, control blue, and green is low value. What happens is, is early morning, early in trading, um, um, in, in trading, when, when you come back below, you can see market profile. Sometimes they'll call right to it, but they will move during the day. But uh, what happens with this is that you can use profile with this strategy because if my low value area, let's say, is here, meaning the red level is here, my red low value is red, high value is green, control point is blue. But if I if I do this and I get below my low value area, you better look for momentum in the first FZR and the second FZR that you have. You better look for the first momentum and the second momentum that you have right when market profile breaks. The first time it breaks through that. Because what that tells you is if you ever are below low value area on my time frames or above high value area, which is green on my time frames, you are in a blow off rally if it's above green, or which I use a five minute chart, or if you're below red, which is low value, you're in a blow off sell off. There's no support below you, none, according to market profile, which is profiling all the volume in the market. It's taken all the algorithms, all the pop prop firms, all the hedge funds, all the professional traders, amateurs, putting all that volume together and producing three lines. And if they're below, you better jump on Momos, FCRs, and, and Momos when you're below it. So that's just another added feature we like to add for you guys. Uh, but, um, you know, I, I did a whole lot of videos on market profile before. I don't want to go into that depth with it. But it just tells you if you first break it, look for the Momo, look for the FCR, and then see if you guys can fire in those trades as far as that goes. So vice versa, if the market switches over, and I get an oscillator that goes above 80, right? But look, see how it doesn't go back below 80 and you get a green reversal bar? See how red reversal bar here? Back to green? That market's looking to counter trend trade its way back up. You better lay off shorts. Because if that oscillator stays above 80, this is called an extreme MOMO. This is a regular MOMO. An extreme MOMO, if you are below 20 or above 80, so this is a regular MOMO, this is an extreme MOMO, you better back off your shorts. You can counter some trade if you want. I like just going with trend myself, but this is extreme MOMO. If that happens, you better watch out. That sucker can scream up hard, and it does a lot if you see an extreme MOMO. Regular MOMO is just below 80 on shorts or above 20 on buys, extreme MOMO, above 80 on longs, or below 80, you'll come up like this. you come up to it. If it's selling hard, it'll touch right on my 20, and you'll get that reversal bar, move an average spread, and it'll tank, the market will tank, okay? So this is something where extreme MOMOs happen at these levels. Make sure you're aware of that also. So if you guys want to see some Rapid movement, Momos is a great way to do it. Extreme Momos, watch out. This is an extreme Momo right here. They got it pinned, pinned below 20. And it went down 16 ticks immediately on a trend change. And you'll see that a lot. Um, if you're going to take a trend change Momo to scalp the market, you'll want to see this stay below 20 if you're selling. If you're trying to scalp the market and you see this turn red ATR to green ATR, the first green dot, and you you want to stay above 80. And if it, if that oscillator dips below 80 and you got a trend change that just happened, guess what's going to happen? It's not going to be extreme MOMO. It's going to come down to the FCR. So this oscillator helps you out a lot. It really does with my ATR. They really work great together because it tells you basically – if you're going to rotate into an FCR or if you're going to MOMO 
hard for an extreme move up, extreme move up, extreme move down, or it's going to tell you if you got a momentum after an FCR inside the zone for a continuation. It's pretty neat because once you find a time frame that you guys like to enjoy, that you like to uh, to follow, I kind of like the larger time frames. Um, the 12020 is one of my favorite time frames with the Uni Rinko. Um, and then what I like to do is I like to have this smaller time frame, the 11313 beside it. Because once you get the 11313 beside it, what happens is, is it allows you to see uh, subsections of the move up or down. In other words, if I get a 11313, which is a smaller time frame, and I bring this over into what time was that? 1230? Okay, it's today. So let's bring over a smaller time frame and just take a look at how smaller time frames work. I like it beside it because I only have momentum setups on this. I do not have any FCRs on here. So that's why this never printed here in FCR arrow. These arrows automatically came up today. Um, if you're running this time frame, this is a 113.13 um, that fired automatically, fired, 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 fired. So the reason being is that um, the reason they were momentum setups because it stayed below 80, right? Stayed below 80 with reversal. Stayed below 80. That's an extreme. That's extreme almost set off a small time frame. So this is a real small time frame. Your entry is 97 and a quarter. It got as low as 90. That's a seven point S&P push, which is a 28 tick potential run right there off of a smaller time frame extreme MOMO. So, you know, this MOMO did not fire. Now, well, you're, you're probably asking, well, why didn't this MOMO fire? Extreme MOMO on a smaller time frame. Because my ATR is green. And I put that in there because what I noticed is, is I don't want you getting long or, uh, long or short into a position of a trend change. I want to see the dots print first. Then I want to see a MOMO here that establishes trend. And if you this sucker was all the way this wave structure, 97 all the way down to 76, I mean, you're talking about 20 S&P points potential right there. Just a matter of that extreme MOMO. And that started at 1244, all the way down to around 1306. I mean, that's, that's crazy. It's about a 20-minute time frame where you get 20 potential S&P points using a MOMO off a smaller time frame. So you can see where the MOMOs happen. I mean, you, you can see where this one started MOMO on up. This is where we got a long on the larger time frame. And this short, short time frame confirmed MOMO here, MOMO here, MOMO here. The reason arrows did not print I'm not going to have arrows printed. My ATR is still red, if that makes sense. So I like these two beside each other because it sort of gives you, um, it, it lets you catch sweet spots of real small stops because you knew we're in a downtrend already. Um, that's 13.02. Go back to larger time frame. 13.02. This is your this is your first retracement after an FZR. So instead of trading off of a 120.20. Because remember, if you trade off a 120.20 Uni Rinko, your stop's going to have to be 23 ticks. Why? Because if I trade off a 120.20, that's telling me that the distance between the low of this bar and the high of this bar is 20 ticks. So what does that tell me? Well, once I turn a red reversal bar and it tells you to go short, let's say here, if you automatically just enter at the market, you're going to get the low live fill of this bar. So what does that tell you? Well, if the next bar, the Rinko bar, goes up 20 ticks, which it can do according to the Rinko I put on is 20, you're going to get stopped out right at the high of 20 ticks, and it's going to tank. So that's how you have to look at your reward to risk. You know, if you want to trade off larger time frames, you're going to take a little more risk on. And if you do that, you're going to get less less uh, you're going to get less trades, but you're going to get better results. However, how you can do that is if you want to get even better results, let the larger time frame set you up, but then you fire in a smaller time frame. Right there. Okay, and that's why I let the charts, uh, I like them beside each other on the 
um, as far as the momentum goes, entering on a momentum entry. All right, so that's that's a great way to do it on using larger time frame to set up, smaller time frame to fire in a trade with a smaller stop. Because then if I use a 13 Looney Renko, um, you know, my rule of thumb is this. You should go, your stop should be three ticks above your Uni Renko that you use. So if I, and you guys can do what you want. I'm just trying to educate you guys what, what I like to, to look at. If I use a 113.13, you should have a 16 tick stop. If I use a 110.10, you should have a 13 tick stop. Okay, so a 155, you should have an 8 tick stop. If you use a 133, you should have a 6 tick stop. So, you know, you could on scalping. I mean, some traders will trade off of this. They'll see this. They'll see a, a trend change, um, and they'll and they'll see the first error that comes in, and they'll use a real small stop. You know, so uh, off of a small time frame that can catch this big this big push down right there. So, depending on how you guys want to do it, uh, but that's my rule of thumb how I like to do things. Now let's get into the auto a little bit because next week I'm going to show you how to do this stuff. So when we come into the auto then. All right, so the auto is, it's, it's the same thing. Now, this is called J legs up here. So don't look into this. I get traders like this all the time. Gerald sends out, you sends a new, um, he sends a new name out to you guys, like sim this, sim that. Listen, to keep all these strategies correct, because I have multiple strategies that, that, I have, that, that I'm working on and I'm trading and stuff like that. So I'd name them crazy names just to get my, my mind right on, on J legs means I got the momentum indicator and the FCR together, right? It's just, it's just something that keeps me, my mind right on what I'm doing. But we name it different for you guys. So it won't be called J legs. Um, it will be called whatever that Gerald decides to name this and send it out to you. So don't get caught up in these names up here. So don't think you got the wrong program. Got the right program. I just, when I build these things from scratch, from bottom up, um, I call them what I want to call them to get my, I'm um, right, because if I go into it, you look at all these different strategies, you know, I got J Momo, J Strategy, Bar Strategy 4 or 5, J Zone, J Zone Ticks, and multiple strategies that, that, I'm, that I'm playing, J Ticks, Zone Ticks, J Zone. So don't think that just because that you don't have a J in front of you, that's just my way of knowing what I built, how I've got it going on, and stuff like that, okay? So that being said, this is the same. Uh, this is auto in on Momo trades. What you can do on momentum trades, what what I I find, which I'm going to educate traders, which I, I think is a great way to do uh, for momentum, is preset your stop, right? Preset your targets, preset your trail. Everything's already preset. So then if we get the first FZR that comes up here and I tell traders that the, the best time to look for Momo trade is here, right? Then the best time to turn on the strategy would be any time after an FZR. Any time in between the FZR because that first retracement should be your best momentum. And you don't have to take my word for it. You can look at the... Uh, look at watch it daily on your own charts and watch how momentum the first one is typically the best one some of you traders that really want to cherry pick it you will even want to wait till market profile breaks low value or high value then you get extreme momentum to the downside typically the first momentum trade is the best now I do I will have traders that want to trade this around the clock they want to trade it 23 out of 24 hours a day and say hey let's just get in this strategy let it run that's why you sign a risk disclosure because listen Auto trading, anything can happen. Your computer can go down. There's not just resting orders there at your broker. If your computer goes down, your internet goes out, something happens. Listen, if you're in a trade, whether it be manual trade or auto trading, anything that can happen, does happen, will happen. I've done it before. I've gotten hammered in strategy runner before. I've lost a lot of money using auto trading strategy runner. I was trading the currency pairs and then it stalled on me. Uh, and uh, I thought I was up 20 plus thousand dollars. I was actually down 40 some odd thousand. So, you know, it's just things happen. And I'm going to tell you right now, if you use this, we allow you to trade live trades with the auto trade. You want to watch it live. And that's how I'm educating traders how to do this. That's why we signed the risk disclosure. 
But what you're going to find is there's a rhythm to this. What I like to do is I like to show traders, educate them. They can toggle on the auto trade instead of manually trying to enter this. As soon as I get an FCR, the momentum typically happens afterwards. Toggle it on. Double click it. Double click on the on your control center, um, on your strategy, on Ninja Trader, and it turns it on. It turns it green. Once it's green, okay, you'll see green over here. It'll turn green. Right here, you see J legs green, J Momo green, J legs green. These are active right now. They are on for me right now as we speak. They're waiting till the market opens up at 6 p.m. and then we'll start trading these markets. So they'll be green. You just double click under enabled or disabled, two clicks, turns it on. So I can double click this off real quick. Now it's off. Double click and oops, a single click, sorry, now it's on. One click, now it's off. One click, now it's on. One click, now it's off. What you shouldn't do is this. You shouldn't go in here and hit in strategy, go all the way down to strategy, click enable, go to apply. I mean, it's just a pain in the tush. Have it set up so you can double click on enable, one click off, one click on. One click off, one click on. It's a left click of your mouse. That's simple. So that being said, once you get this set, okay, let's go back in here. Let me double click, let me click this off. Oops, sorry. So have everything preset, right? So listen, none of you guys and gals are going to have the same targets. None of you are going to have the same time frames. None of you are going to have the same back tests. And that's great. That's why we decided to release this to everybody. No one's going to have the same thing because every market's a little bit different, right? Some, some traders are going to have different targets, risk tolerance. Some are going to be scalpers. Some are going to be position traders. Some are going to be winning one or two trades a day on different time frames. Some are going to have different stops, large stops versus small stops. That's up to you. This is... We provide educational software for you guys, and you run with it as fast as you want to run with it or as slow as you want to run with it, right? And so what we, what we did do is I built you a great shell. I built you a great shell on how to get into these, and this is what we're going to go over next week. We're going to go over how to optimize these settings. It's inside here. So if I come all the way down and I look at target 1, 20 ticks, target 2, 40, 360, target 480. The reason I have stop 23, uh, breaking plus one, minus 23, I like to let it breathe. I'll go over that next week. But uh, the reason I'm going to show you how to do this next week on how to optimize, because some of you guys are different. Your risk tolerance is different. Your styles are different. All right. So we're going to break this down now that I've really explained really what, what have we done? Five now? Five videos? I'm going to break this down on what, why check Momo or why check zone, one of the two, right, or why check both. You know, so we're going to go in that, we're going to start right from, right from the uh, conference call all the way for about an hour and just going through settings. I think I've done enough on trying to explain how to, uh, to, to work the auto in, auto out. We're doing strictly doing numbers because I got this program now. Now we can do this. So this is Momo on. So, but I'm going to show you how to, uh, you can adjust your Momo too. You don't have to use the same MAs. I, I left this open code. You don't have to use the same oscillator on the retracement to give you a little different results. You know, you, I'm going to show you how to optimize this. Trade size. You don't have to do four contracts, guys. If you want to come down and do different contracts, entries per direction. So watch when I do this. Let me show you this real quick. We'll, we'll, I want to go over this this week, so I have to go over it next week. So let's say I toggle this back on. All right, we're doing four contracts right away. So it's one, two, three, four. It's going four short, and th these are the minis, right? Micros. Micros one tenth of the big contract. And listen, if you can't make money at the micros with this, listen. If you lease our program. And manually, if you can't make money with the micros, this program is not for you. You shouldn't be trading the bit larger contract, right? Because if you can't make money with micros, which is one-tenth of the big contract, 
this is a great way to learn because guess what? You learn more from live trading than you do sim trading. So once you sim trade, I tell traders, sim trade it for two, three weeks. And if you're pro consistently profitable with the system, then go into, once you do live trading, if you, you uh, elect to do that, you know, go with the micros because it's one tenth of the big contract. And that way you don't blow accounts up trying to figure out what an FCR is or momentum setup. But once you get in, in mode with the micros and you want to graduate to the big contract, that's when, even if you have larger accounts, uh, you know, that's when traders can graduate up to the larger contract. Okay? Because they, they're both the same. The big contract and the micro, they both have the same sell setup. The ES and the micro ES come up at the same time. Okay? So these arrows automatically come up right for you an indicator but use a strategy that's a good way to do it you can click on so if I have an FCR that comes up I have a trend change here and I say okay you know what I want to do I'm, I'm cracking through below low value area I just saw this right and this thing's off and uh, you have the you can have the indicator on too so watch you can have the indicator that's still printing this uh, printing these dots right but then, because if you, if you click the strategy off, if you only have the strategy on here, which I do, I just have the strategy on, if you have the indicator, you can have the indicator and strategy uh, on one chart. The reason I do that is, let the indicator run, and if the indicator was showing this, for example, these dots will automatically stay on here the whole time. So then what you do is you double click on the strategy, and the strategy will get you filled right there in that first zero, right? But if you do the first one, have it, what I would do is I wouldn't do long, I wouldn't do large targets. It's a scout market. You know, I have it set up where you can put a couple strategy on, on there at the same time, where I can have these strategies over here to the right. I can have four or five strategies with different targets. So my first strategy, I could say, hey, that's my scalp strategy. I'll turn that on to scalp this from here to here for 15, 16, 20 ticks, whatever. But this strategy I'm turning on, I want to have it set down here, this J legs or whatever we call it for you guys. I want to have it set for 20, 40, 60, 100, 150 ticks. Because I know after the first FZR, that's my big one. And all you do is double click it off. I can click these on and off just fast. Look how fast this is. It's by one click. Right? So, you know, you can, you can turn those on and off just like that. If it's one, it's very simple. Boom. On, off. I would not go in the strategy and click it because it takes too long. Just go under your Ninja Trader and under Enable, left click it, it's off. Left click it, it's on. Okay? Best way to do it. So what I'm saying is, is you can have a program already, already preset to have a, if you want to scalp a trend change because they don't go down very far, or if you want to look for a potential big run on the first one as far as that goes. Okay? You can also have one set up a strategy right here. Set up for your, here's Momo, and here's your full retracement. You can have it set up for this. So if you're coming back up in your below market profile, we first grew up market profile, you said, hey, I want to click this on, right? Then you would double click that on. It would take this zone trade for you also, which is an FCR. And that's what we're going to get into next week, all right? But let me show you what I want to talk about earlier here today. So let me click these off. So those... It goes four contracts, right? Four contracts short. It will never get you more than four contracts short. If you go into this and I go down all the way to entries per direction, let's go down to one. And let's enable. So now I'm enabling with one contract. Now what you're telling yourself, it's only get to target one. That's it. Target one with one contract. The reason I'm saying that, if you can't make money with one contract, how in the heck are you going to make money with two, three, four, or five? So now if I trade the minis, if I'm trading the micros, it's one-tenth of the big contract. If I can't make money with one contract on my entries on trying to auto in or auto out when these when these strategies come up, right, turn them on, turn them off uh, when, when, the, when the, the setup comes up, then you're not going to do it with two, three, four contracts, right? So I did that because once you do trade live micros, it allows you to say, hey, I, if I got target one off, that means I'm gravy on target two, three, or four, because guess what? Under my strategy, I got break even plus one on it, right? 
So I'm free all the way down. If I could just get to my target one, which it did, my 20 ticks, it's free. I got I can get 40 free, 60 ticks free, 80 ticks free because it goes up to break even plus one. Because I got a break even down here, I got a minus 23 right there on that one. But you go break even plus one is telling you that you are break even plus one and you won't lose after your first target. We'll go over that next week. All right, so you can change your contracts. If I want to do two contracts, just change directions to two. And then when I uh, enable, now it's going to go to the first, first and second contract, and it's not going to do any more contracts. It's going to wait for the next setup. But you can see it goes target one, target two, target one, target two. Uh, it, it, you can go as high as you want. I, I let, if you find time frames where you just find time frame where it's just kicking butt on this thing, you know, I don't limit what you can do you know you want to do 20 you know do 20 it just I'm not going to limit you what you want to do I'm just telling you if you can't make money with one off the first contract uh, it's you know you just it's going to be tough doing that as far as that goes all right so um, uh, you have to change your multiples if you do larger than that than this I'm sorry that was wrong I should do the wrong way if you want to do real multiple contracts then you have to change your multiple up here so that to trade size two now it goes in multiples of two so those are the two how you want to change back and forth multiples two four six eight now I went eight contracts short so if you want to do eight contracts short there then you can change that multiple to two all right, but just remember, you can change it down here. Also, if you want to just change it up to one, and it will give you uh, one per contract as far as that goes. All right, so that's how you can do position sizing back and forth. I just want to show you it's easy to double click on, double click off, you know, back and forth. But then you can do multiples of two also if you change those two things. So what you want to work with on number of contracts you want to do. You want to change uh, right here the multiples because we'll get in depth next week how to do it. But trade size right there, and then you want to go down to entries per direction. Okay, so then you can you can customize how you want to do it as far as your entries go. But like I said, um, if I get a trend change here, this is a scalp from here to here. And obviously it got lower. But if I get an FCR and I'm looking for a big possible run, it's one click. Turn it on. Turn it off. Now what I am doing on the uh, update, we will have, um, we will have, uh, if you do like to run it around the clock, I do have time set where, you know, this thing is set. So... It, it's based upon Eastern Standard Time, but it doesn't matter if you're over in Europe or what have you. Um, it's military time right there. You can it won't it won't take trades um, outside of this zone, right? And then I have it set down here. Daily goal, daily stop. Let's say you say, hey, I want this thing to trade for three hundred bucks, but and I don't I want to lose. 200 bucks for the day. I mean, it will shut off on whichever one's hit first. You can do that. Uh, there's just there's multiple things to this thing that's pretty neat that you can that you can utilize, um, and you can change your zones. Um, everything's customizable. Uh, you can change your trend, trend period. We'll go over all this stuff next week. How you can go into uh, what we'll go over next week is that we can go into here. There we go. All right, so um, we'll go into next week on Strategy Analyzer, and I'm going to show you how we can go to walk forward, and I'll show you how to how you can go in here and customize uh, your ranges that you want on your stops, your targets, and I'll optimize the best target for you based upon that time frame. I'll show you how I can uh, test time frames, multiple time frames, start dates, end dates. Um, 
uh, what you want to always do when you run the optimizer, run it as genetic, or you will be, you'll never get results for days. <laughs> so I'll show you how to do genetic on how you get a zip fast. I mean, it's really fast on the Momo. It tells you the results immediately um, on the time frame you want to use. Instruments, you can go down through the instruments that you want to use, the trading hours. But the instruments, uh, you can go to whatever instrument you want to use. You know, and you can back test that right away on whatever UNI you want to use. And I'll show you how to do that next week with the time frame and, and so on. Okay? So that's what we'll do next week. Uh, I Listen, I envision this being a four-part series. There's so much to this because it's a very sophisticated algorithm. But, it's you know, there's, there's a lot to this. But the great thing about it is, is you can see how accurate it is catching the full retracement and the momos. It's just a really great program that we put together. So um, uh, we'll, we'll catch the next one next week, same time, Wednesday at uh, 4.30. I'm just going to keep getting more in depth and depth and depth until you guys, uh, it clicks with you guys, and uh, we'll just keep doing it. Um, I envision doing all this in four videos. I can't even come close because you can tell I talk for an hour straight trying to make it simple for you. but we just got to keep going more in depth and depth and depth until we understand exactly how this thing works. Um, and we're going to keep doing that for you on a weekly basis. So I'll be in here tomorrow. I'll be in here tomorrow at 15. Next week we'll get into a little bit of back testing on it. And, um, and we're, we're just going to keep breaking this thing down um, and so on. And we're going to keep doing that until we are, we're good to go.